Hi guys, in this video we are going to have a look at the ability of Shelter to support encoded payloads. The payload can be encoded either by a generic framework like Metasploit or can be a custom uh, encoder like a custom decryptor prepended to the payload that is uh, created by the user. In this case here I have uh, shell code encoded by Metasploit that uh, launches calculator. So let's load again the host file. Let's interrupt the tracing. Okay. So let's select. Uh, the payload and uh, this time because the payload is encoded we have to enable this option so we say yes the payload is encoded and then we can choose between two options we can either use a, a dynamic payload uh, encoded payload handler that uh, is supported by by shelter or we can just uh, use um, another method which means that uh, we are going to change uh, the permissions of that section um, inside the p file so that uh, it will have full permission so the payload can then uh, decrypt itself now in, in this case we are going to use the first method first we are going to use one of the encoded payload handlers that Celter supports So basically, Shelter what is doing through this option is checking which of these or combination of these APIs uh, the P file is using, and uh, it shows to the user which methods he can use in order to uh, allocate executable and writable memory so that uh, the payload can be copied there and decrypt itself. So in this case, just use the first option, which uh, uses the virtual alloc so we see the address inside the import address table where the pointer uh, basically the address of virtual alloc is stored so let's use the first method and uh, in this case I'm not going to prepend any polymorphic code because I want this uh, to be fast Let's just check the last entry. Okay, we see now that uh, set is going also to adjust uh, the stamp pointers to the import address table. So let's execute, and we see that uh, calculator is launched. So let's load this to the only debugger, and uh, let's go to that address in memory and uh, let's examine the payload handler we see that it calls virtual alloc and then copies the stub actually the, the encoded payload and then jumps to that memory and starts executing so if I just put a breakpoint here And then I start uh, executing. We see that it calls virtual alloc, allocates memory, copies the payload there, then jumps, and then it starts executing the payload which decrypts itself. And finally, calculator is going to be launched. So now we're going to do something different. I'm going to delete this and uh, bring another copy of this uh, hex editor now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use the other method of uh, injecting the encoding payload so that it can decrypt itself, which is uh, by changing the permissions of uh, the section where the payload is going to be permanently written inside the file. <coughs> So let it trace. Let's just uh, stop here. I'm going to select again the encoded payload. This time I'm going to use the second method, which is uh, by changing the section's permission so that uh, the encoded payload can decrypt itself in memory. I'm not going to prepend any polymorphic code. Just select the last entry. Okay. So let's run this again. We see it works. Let's load it to Oli. See what happens. So basically now, because we didn't prepend any polymorphic code, we will uh, just directly see our encoded payload. And here it is. So if I put a breakpoint there, just execute. Because now Shelter has changed the permissions of the section, the payload can decrypt itself. And then let's calculate. This is even if this method changes uh, uh, the permission of the section and gives also writable access. Uh, it's quite powerful because if we combine this uh, with uh, polymorphic code, and uh, it's very difficult for an AV to actually locate this code because it doesn't use any encoded handler uh, actually an, a handler for to support encoded payload like uh, the first case we saw so if you uh, let shelter generate like a, quite a big chunk of uh, polymorphic code so you give it some space for randomness so you generate like 500 bytes of polymorphic code and then you directly use this method to inject uh, an encoded payload uh, it's going to be very, very, quite, quite random, and uh, uh, especially if you also have your own uh, uh, encoding methods that uh, don't match any, let's say, signatures that uh, can be matched against uh, uh, Metasploit. And uh, this is also one of the features that I'm going to to add in the future, so that uh, Center will have. Um, uh, its own uh, encoding for uh, for the payloads. So this was it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.